Okay, and welcome to the live stream. Um, a little bit late today. Sorry, everyone, but um, you know how it is sometimes. So um, I'm, as usual, I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit and kind of get into things uh, as we're going here. Let me know how the volume is. I'm gonna try and turn it up. Um, I was in a bit of a rush today, so um, here we go. I'm gonna try and turn it up see how that is how's the guitar and everything um, maybe it's a, bit, a little too quiet let me know maybe it's uh, it might be a little too quiet I'll try and bring the volume up a little bit as we're going on here. I'm just kind of, as we're going, changing, adjusting my settings a little bit. Um, so please excuse me there. But uh, today I want to talk a little bit about um, alternate tunings, basically. And uh, I don't want to dive too deep into this. Um, and I'm not going to look at specific types of tunings, you know. Um, I'm just gonna kind of talk about my approach when I'm starting to explore with alternate tunings. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the topic that I wanna talk about today. But, but with all of these, like I always say on every live stream, um, please feel free to, to ask questions and leave comments and everything like this because um, I'll get to it in a second. I just like to kind of Get myself, uh, get myself comfortable, and get myself comfortable like talking in this live stream, you know. Um, chat for a little bit, you know, as we're going. Uh, but yeah, feel free to 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 write comments in the um, in the comment section as we're going, um, and I'll have a look at that in a second. I haven't uh, haven't even looked at it yet. Um, but I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about alternate tunings um, and also feel free to kind of talk about um, ask any questions and you know I have each time I always talk have a certain topic to talk about but you know really it's it's open for all discussions um, so I really want to start really simple and basic and what is an alternate tuning to me that's everything or anything that is not a standard tuning um, that's what an alternate tuning is to me, you know, standard tuning being E, A, D, G, B, E on guitar. Uh, I'm in dad gad here, D, A, D, G, A, D. Um, a very popular tuning, it's a modal tuning, um, which, which basically kind of means that there's no major or minor in there, it's a sus4 tuning. So it's, uh, you can kind of have it minor sounding or major sounding and so there's lots of flexibility with modal tunings which are tunings I really enjoy to explore um, so uh, when first starting out with a, uh, an open tuning um, and please let me know in the comments what how how you explore open tunings when you're just starting out um, I like to explore the, the dominant key. So like that's the lowest note. Whatever key that your, your tuning is in, say it's like dad gad is, you know, I would choose the D minor or D major. Um, and I'm gonna play some songs in, uh, in this tuning. Why don't I just start, I'll just start with a song that's in this open tuning. You know, why don't I start with that? Um, I'll just do a quick one. This is uh, Nobody's Fault But Mine by Blind Willie Johnson. This is my own version of it. And this is in stand, this is standard. This is in like a D minor key. So it's like I'm using these lots of open strings and lots of these, you know, these, these minor, minor thirds minor sevenths notes uh, and 
With all this, don't worry if you don't know the names of the notes and you don't know the, the, how they relate to each other for now. Um, it does help when moving forward, but you know, the, the main thing is just to kind of use your ears and uh, trust your ears that they, they're telling you what sounds good. If you think that sounds good, then do it, you know. Um, yeah, so we'll start off with that. I'll do a, a touch of, oh, I think I already have reverb on. Whoops, I left it on. <laughs> so I just said all that with a bunch of reverb on me, right? Let me know if the reverb's coming through. See, it's hard for me because it's like, I'm, because I'm going through my DAW as, as this stream. Um, which allows me to add effects and do various different things. Um, but uh, tell me if that's coming through. I'll just turn it off as I'm talking because uh, it's a little distracting. But basically, I can't hear exactly what you're hearing because it's going through the DAW. If I was hearing exactly what's going through the, the door, then I would be hearing double like in my headphones, and that's really distracting. Um, so I'm just listening to what's going from uh, directly from my audio interface, um, not from the door. It's a bit, little bit uh, of a complicated setup. But anyway, I'll just stick a bit of this reverb on. I've got a super simple setup, um, just using the mic today. No pickups or anything. Um, just a very, very simple and basic setup. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Let's give it a try.
That was Nobody's Fault But Mine by Blind Willie Johnson. And uh, today we're talking about open tunings. And uh, that was an, um, or alternate tunings, uh, that was that was Dadgad I'm in, and I'm playing in a, um, in the key of D minor. And I just want to kind of, wanted to demonstrate that um how i uh how that sounds and and the things that you can do and that's when first starting out with an open tuning or just focus on the the dominant key and that's that would be like whatever depending on the tuning that you're in the, the for me d major or or d minor you know and the first thing I do is kind of find, kind of the notes in the scale that you want to play in, whether that's a minor scale or a major scale, major key, whatever, and just find the notes. And there's no, you know, wrong notes here. It's it, it's whatever you, you think sounds best. You know, if it sounds good to you, if you want to put it in. means so find these notes that you like um, and familiarize yourself with them that's that's kind of the first step that I do anyway I'm gonna go to uh, I'm just gonna open the chat and see see who we've got um, before I I move on um, let me just open my thing here oh, we got hey don how's it going bitch too much reverberation in the voice <laughs> yeah you know i realized that uh i realized that too a bit too late there um but yeah that's <laughs> should be fine now huh let me know if that's uh if it's if it's uh if it's okay it should be no reverb uh but yeah thanks for letting me know Don, um, Ronald is here. Hey, Ronald, how's it going? Um, I think Ronald, have you just signed up? I think I saw you just sign up to the um, to the community. Welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for for doing that. Hope you enjoy it. Um, many vibes as always. How's it going? Um, ba -ba. Yeah, what I might do, I might turn, I might turn the reverb down, maybe. Um, because it's one mic, I prefer to to have less reverb. Hold on, let me just, uh, I'm just going to turn it on for a second. There we go. Well, and uh, I can't actually hear this annoyingly. Maybe I need to have a different setup. Um, Turn it down slightly, just ever so slightly. But let me know if that was okay. Um, if the reverb was okay for the song. Um, it's a bit of an annoying setup. It's a bit of a, it's it's kind of the only way I can do it is through this way, through the, the DAW, um, because it's going into the, 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 the software that I'm using to stream. Um, and that's the only way it can recognize it. But I'm hearing stuff directly from my interface. Uh, so anyway, that's that. Uh, welcome everyone. How's it going? I wish um, I wish uh, wish you all a wonderful um, Saturday. Oh, many vibes. You can't sign up without a computer, really. Um, I'm sure you can do it with a with a um whatever you're using a phone an ipad a uh, tablet um to watch this on um but yeah i'm not sure i haven't actually tried to do it not on a computer so let me look into that but um yeah if you've got an email address just require two things to sign up an email address and just your name or whatever name you want to put you know um 
but there's a link there's always links in uh, for this to sign up to the community uh in the description down below but i'll look at that many vibes if there's uh if you i'm not able to oh you would have to allow cookies uh, i'm not sure really um yeah i have to look into that um I'm not sure the thing on that. I'm using, I use Banzoogle for my website and it's a US based, it's a US based uh, website. Um, so, and the, and the, the cookie laws are slightly different in the U, in the EU. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if that makes any difference. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyway. I'll check if you can do it through uh, a um, not a desktop, not a computer. So uh, let me know in the comments if anyone here um, uses open tunings or alternate tunings. Um, and does anybody know the difference between an alternate tuning and an open tuning? Genuinely, I'm not really sure. I'm not 100%. Um, I, I think maybe an open tuning is like something where it's an, it's an obvious kind of open chord, you know, like a G chord or a D chord or something when you, when you play all the open strings, hence open, maybe, is that, could that be the case, maybe, maybe, and an alternate tuning is, it can be anything, it's alternate alternative to the standard tuning right that's that's my perception on it but anyway does it matter probably not um i don't know why uh but let me know if anybody here uses alternate tunings even if anything that can be you know um anything that is not standard tuning that can be like even drop d tuning or whatever um or let me know if you if you haven't explored with alternate tunings um because it can be really it can be really fun doing it you know uh, and it's not necessarily something that you have to write songs on you know because it can be quite intimidating when just using alternate tunings um when you're starting with alternate tunings because you don't know where any of the notes are you can't play any of your the shapes that you already that you knew before or any chords or anything like that so it can be quite kind of overwhelming and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, and uh, but I see that as kind of a good thing because it gets all that kind of the stuff, the shapes and the, the patterns and all that out of the way, um, because we can think about that too much. That can be too much part of our playing. Um, and it kind of gets that uh, that childlike spirit back again you know when you first picked up the guitar um you know whether you were a child when you first picked up the guitar or not you know <laughs> i think we all, all have a similar kind of approach i hope um where you just pick up the guitar and you just you're not trying trying not to judge yourself you know um i think probably kids have a better um a better kind of mentality when it comes to that because kids are just not they're not judging what they're playing. They're just in the moment and they're just loving it and enjoying what, what they're doing. Um, and I think that's that's how it should be, right? Um, so, uh, yeah. I My first thing that I do is I explore where the notes are um, in this first key, you know. Just... Just like to, in the first three to five frets, maybe something like this, um, and with a lot of alternate tunings, you know, especially ones that have repeated notes, like this has three Ds, it has two As, and a G. So the two As, you know. going to be the same obviously um, 
so I can repeat a lot of things. Uh, and with the Ds as well, you know, if I figure out one string where the notes are, then I can then I know that for all three, you know. Um, so it can be quite, quite easy and quite fast to kind of work out where, uh, where the notes are. Yeah. You know? um, so that's kind of the first step. Explore the notes. Um, the beauty of alternate tunings it can free up your playing. Uh, it can inspire. It can get you out of a rut. It can do all these amazing things, you know. Um, so it doesn't have to be part of your repertoire, you know. It doesn't have to be something that you have to then include in uh, in your live shows or, or anything like this or in uh, as part of your songs, you know. It can just be something to get you out of a rut and to get you, um, yeah, to get you inspired again uh, if you're if that's something you're struggling with, you know. Um, so, you know, don't don't think like you then if you start using it that you then have to include it. You know, um, a lot of the time I have written songs in different tunings, and then I've converted that song to a to another tuning. You know, like for me, Dadgad is like my standard tuning. I use most of my songs are in Dadgad, um, so it's like my standard and um, a few other songs I wrote in some really obscure tunings uh, but when I'm playing live I want to play those songs but I don't necessarily want to be like there for 10 minutes trying to get in this really weird obscure tuning I can't even remember what the tuning was now or even the song at the, right now but um, my point is I then transcribed that song that was in the obscure tuning to dadgad you know to kind of work in dadgad tuning um and you know if i was to record that song again whatever it was can't remember now um i would probably play it in the obscure tuning because that's what gave it it's it's kind of it's uh it's uniqueness i guess in a way um but you're still able to transcribe songs from alternate tunings to to other tunings you know um they they won't might not sound exactly the same but um they still they still it still kinds of works um and it works for me you know i don't like to use too many tunings live i don't like to be like there tuning up my guitar um and i don't like to travel with too many guitars as well you know <laughs> otherwise i'll be traveling with like five guitars or something um yeah so that's 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 that point so um it can inspire you that's the beauty of alternate tunings uh there is a downside there is a downside to two alternate tunings um and that's everything you you play can sound very similar you know because we're using especially if you're in these these dominant keys you know the D if you're in Dadgad, D minor, D major. Um, it can sound kind of... Dadgad-y, you know? <laughs> That's how, how I explain it. It's, it's, it sounds like Dadgad, you know? Uh, and they, especially in, in major, for some reason, this sounds even more Dadgad-y. because I'm using lots of open strings and mixed with the fretted notes but a lot of open strings here you know I'm really only fretting like two one or two notes you know the rest is open strings and it sounds lovely but um, it can sound all the same <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be careful with that um so it's so i'm going on different points here but um 
So first step would be kind of working out where the notes are. Um, then I would try and combine, try and write a little melody, you know, using these these notes um, in this dominant key. So it would be something like. I don't know, whatever. Um, just like a single line melody, you know. Mixing these open strings with the fretted notes. Um, just to try and compose something, you know. Um, uh, because it, you can find, especially with th tunings like Dadgad, um, it's just, it's very easy to just come up with something beautiful like that, you know, um, especially in this, in this, in this key in D minor or D major. Uh, so that's what I would do. And then, and then I would slowly start adding some bass notes as well to that. So it would be something like... very simple like the open dominant um, then something like I don't know then for example um, so I would just mess around with that and, and try and come up with different melody ideas. Um, and this is something I, I even do today. And this is something I do for, for songwriting. You know, I just try and come up with some nice sounding melodies um, because that's, that is what's really going to give me inspiration. I know that's what's going to inspire me to write a song is if I have this um, I have this melody that I really, really like, you know, it's going to kind of um, inspire, inspire thoughts, it's going to inspire kind of stuff inside me, um, and then kind of lyrics will come through that. So this is one of the many ways. So a melody would come first, and then I'd put kind of lyrics to it, and it would kind of evolve um, that way. Um, but that's kind of one of the, the, the basic kind of things that I would do with any alternate tuning. Um, well, I'll go to the, the comments now. Uh, let's see who's here. B -b -b hey, Nick. Nick Worley. How's it going? Uh, Nick says, hi, just joined. What is the connector cord that links the Zoom H4 to your smartphone? <laughs> please from Galway Island nice um yeah you know what I should have I should have mentioned that I, I did a short on that um I should have it's I think it's right here actually here it is boing um this is a um it has a name hold on it's uh the connector here is a lightning so it's a lightning to USB phone connector I think it's called something like this. It's like people use it to transfer like images to from a phone to the to a uh, sorry images from a camera to a phone. I think, um, and it's cool because you're able to yeah like use the USB to your phone or something like this, um, and then this to the to the your. Um, no, USB to your camera, I'm getting confused, and this to your phone, and then it has a power, extra power source here. So you can plug this in to a power source um, so it gives it some juice. So, uh, you know, it can um, can power certain things, you know, uh, like a Zoom. And I connected this to my Zoom from my phone. Um, it's something I just I just worked out and I just realized um, you can buy these cheap, these connectors. They're, they're pretty cheap. Although this one I bought, it was like some Amazon thing. It's not, doesn't feel like the best quality. 
you know, it's a bit loose here. Um, it's very kind of, yeah, cheap feeling. Um, I feel like it could break, you know. Um, I might actually invest into the Apple one, the Apple branded one. But yeah, try that. Try Googling um, or whatever, uh, Lightning or, or whatever your your phone connector is. So that's the phone connector, USB-C or whatever, to USB camera camera USB, something like this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't can't give you exactly the name because that's how I found it. Um, something like this. And you should, it should be obvious what you see, you know, how it looks. Um, but yeah, it just has like this connector for your phone and the USB connector here and a power connector here. So you can connect it. It's just like a USB, no, this is this is a lightning bolt, another lightning bolt power. So this is for an for Apple phones. Um, so you can connect that to a power source. Hope that made sense. I waffled on that a little bit, but yeah, that's that's that one. Um, glad you enjoyed the the uh, the short. Hey Paul, how's it going? Good to have you in the live stream. Um, Don says, can you show us an example, but please in slow motion. What was that to, ah, about alternative chords, um, about alternate chords. Do you mean like chords in alternate tunings? Um, let's see what else you said. Ah, now I get it. <laughs> Anything with D G B E, D G B E, D G, D G B E. How do you mean there, John? Uh, Don, sorry. Um, do you mean like you're talking about chords in alternate tunings? I I don't play. I don't actually play. Think about things as chords too much um, but especially when it comes to dad gad um, it's kind of easy to just transfer from standard tuning to dad gad because um, you have these three strings the a uh, d and g are in um, a part of standard tuning anyway you know so something like a C would not be like that because the this isn't B any this isn't yeah it's not B anymore it's an A so you just got to play it here if that makes sense if you can see that so my little finger is on the third fret instead of the first fret it's just little things like that you know um, but I very rarely think about things as chords. Um, I think about things more like melodies and bass lines and intervals and this kind of thing, um, especially when I'm when I'm kind of composing. Uh, let me think. Let me think of an example I can kind of show you. Um, I'll do another song maybe. Oh, now it's clear for me. Okay, I hope I answered in that way. Um, it's sometimes hard to understand exactly what all of you mean. <laughs> sometimes people, when writing uh, writing the questions, but I really try. I try and answer them as best as I can, especially that my reading is like uh, eight year old level. Um, let me just try and uh, let me just finish all of these questions here. Um, do you like Roy Harper? Hey Rick, how's it going? Um, yeah, Roy Harper. I can I keep on thinking of of Ben Harper. Um, I can't picture Roy Harper at the moment, but it rings a bell. It definitely rings a bell. I'm sure I've heard of um, Roy Harper before. Um, but if I haven't, I'll check it out after this stream. Many vibes. I've lost my earpods. <laughs> uh, 
Many Vibes says, bar chords, they're terribly difficult. Do you have any tricks to make it easier? Um, any bar chord tricks? Uh, I, you know, I don't do many bar chords, um, although I probably should because it really um, builds up that muscle um, when you're doing bar chords. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I have any tricks <laughs> with bar chords. <laughs> To be honest, um, it's just, it, it sounds really horrible, but it, 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 it's just a matter of kind of sticking with it and, and, and building up that, that muscle, you know, um, I know they are, they are tricky. Um, I'm not, I'm not a fan of too many bar chords, to be honest, although, um, there's a lot of guitarists that do bar chords, especially in Dadgad. Um, like Pierre Bensison, I, I have a lot of inspiration from him. He does like a lot of barring and he doesn't do too many open strings. Um, and uh, which which results in his music sounding not like Dadgad, <laughs> you know, but he's built this up over many, many years. You know, he only plays in Dadgad but because he uses barring a lot, um, he's he's just able to play in many, many different keys, way more keys than me. Um, and, you know, it's just it's just part of his DNA, you know, uh, dad gad. So um, but yeah, he's he's amazing with with bar chords. But, um, you know, I. I just, I, I really like using open strings, you know, <laughs> and then using the capo. Um, but I do, I have like uh, this one song that I, that I use. It's not really bar chords. of a mixture you know of chords and then some open strings there um but yeah no i don't really have anybody else have any tips that uh for many vibes here um with with bar chords um i mean you know if you're just using it if you're using a lot of bar chords um then you're that kind of that muscle should really um, build up, you know. Uh, just, yeah, keep keep with it. Uh, Don says, steel or nylon strings? In terms of like, what do I prefer? Or, how, how do you mean? Or, or what am I using now? These are steel. I don't know if I prefer depends on what I'm playing and what sound I'm trying to trying to uh, get you know I don't really have too many nylons all the nylon guitars I have are just very kind of cheap old beat up um, <laughs> nylon string guitars but I love them you know and they sound great um, does Tony McManus use bar chords um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. He, I know he uses various tunings. Um, I don't really see him use that many bar chords um, because I know he does use different tunings. Um, so I haven't really seen him use as many bar chords as like Pierre Bensison, for example. Um, uh, and and when I say bar chords, I mean like when Pierre uses bar chords, it's like he's 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 mainly just kind of like barring just a few strings, you know, and then he's and then he's sort of sliding up. And if you see him like he's doing something like this, something pretty wild, um, massively stretching, um, not necessarily you know pressing down on all of the strings. Um, and that's, you know, that's maybe that's another, that could be something you could explore if you're using, if you're playing finger picking, maybe, 
Um, you know, you don't have to be pressing down. If you're using a bar chord when you're finger picking, you don't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, pressing down on all of the strings because you're not necessarily playing all of the strings, you know. You might find that you're able to just press down on just the, you know, the, the, the fourth, fifth, and sixth strings, you know, for example. Um... Ah, Don says, yes, what do you prefer in terms of uh, steel or nylon? Uh, yeah, it goes, like, depends on what sound I'm trying to um, trying to produce, you know. The nylon have a very kind of mellow vibe, you know. So if I'm trying to get that mellow sound, then uh, then I would, I would say nylon. But I just love steel string, you know, and I... Like, this is my main guitar, which is a steel string, you know. Um, most of my songs recorded on steel string. So, um, yeah, I do I do like steel string a lot. Um, so probably steel string, I would say, if I had to choose one. Uh, string gauge. Um, I use Daddario EJ17 strings. I'm not sponsored. Um, I'd love to be though, the Daria, if you're watching this, um, cause I've spent a lot of money on, on, on buying your strings. Um, no, but their medium gauge I find works best for me and the sound that I want. Um, the phosphor bronze is like the coating that they, they put on the strings, um, kind of gives it an extra kind of, uh. I, I guess sort of um, top end sort of sound. I don't know. It's um, I haven't really explored many different other strings. I probably should just because I've been using these for so many years. You know, it's a bit like the situation of once you found something that you like and it's good. You know, you kind of stick with it and don't don't really change. But um, yeah, I keep telling myself I should I should try other strings. You know. Um, other different types and seeing seeing what they sound like uh, but yeah that's what I use um, I've seen him use them in a bit standard to almost get a dad gad sound uh, many vibes what do you mean the the Tony Tony McManus um, seen him use the bar chords in standard to almost get a dad gad sound really yeah that's interesting yeah Tony McManus is amazing guitarist if you, no one's heard of anyone hasn't heard of him you should you should check him out now um, he's uh, he's really amazing I think he lives in Canada now at the moment but he's um, originally from Scotland I think pretty sure um, is that a thing um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of guitarists that make standards sound like an open tuning, you know. Um, I don't know by barring that makes, that you can make it sound like a open tuning. Um, there's, uh, yeah, but there's a lot of great guitarists that don't use any alternate tunings. They or only use standard tunings, you know. Um <clears throat> oh, that's cool. Not barring at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but barring, you know, it has it has its benefits for sure. It has its benefits. And there's lots of different chords that you can in different voicings that you can that you can uh, create, you know, so it is useful for sure doing uh, bar chords. Um, Sparkle, yeah, exactly. It has a certain sparkle, the the phosphor bronze, exactly. Hey, and we got some few new people uh, joining the the live stream, which is really cool. Hello, uh, oh, I'm gonna. Uh, sorry if I butcher your name. Um, 
or the name that you've put down. Joe Bowles, is that right? Uh, sorry, if it's not. <laughs> sorry, if it's not. Um, medium strings is zero one three. Uh, yeah, zero thirteen to zero fifty six. Yeah, I think it is. I'm pretty sure that's medium. 13 to 56, sounds right. That's that's medium. Um, hey, Hama, how's it going? Uh, good to hear from you. So, uh, what is your vocal practice? Um, non-existent. <laughs> I don't practice vocals. Um, I... I just sing, you know. I'm I'm very much a guitarist and then a singer. Guitarist first and singer after. Um, I've always been that way. Um, I've always been very self-conscious about my singing. Um, for years and years, I felt like I hated my voice. I hated the way I sung. I felt like I couldn't sing. I felt like I was singing out of tune all the time. Um, and up until, you know really uh like 10 years ago um i was i felt that way you know um and i've been playing and singing you know since uh since i was like 10 um so a long time uh, but i went through periods of kind of not singing and then singing as well you know so i wasn't like constantly singing and i never practiced i never took any lessons Never had any singing lessons at all. Um, but uh, what really helped, I found, um, was doing busking. I lived in Bristol, which is uh, an amazing city in the UK. Um, and in Bristol, I was busking every day for a year. I was basically living on friends' floors and sofas. This is when I was younger and didn't have... Uh, family or anything you know any responsibilities so I could do that and I recommend everyone do that uh for a little bit you know for a year I was just every day I would get out there even if it was raining snowing whatever and I would busk literally all day um and I would get out I would get out try and get out early and I would busk um and I was literally living hand to mouth so whatever money I would get, I would then use that to buy breakfast and then I would busk again and then I would use that money to, to have lunch, you know, and maybe buy some 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 other food that I could use later and then for the next day. And, you know, so it's very much living hand to mouth. Um, but, you know, it was great because I didn't, I, I wasn't paying rent, you know, I was living on friends' sofas and stuff and uh, having a great time. And then in the evenings, I would go and do like open mics. So that's that was my year. And literally, I would do an open mic every single day of the week. Sometimes I would do open mics twice in a night, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, every chance I could, I was just playing and singing and, and uh, all day, every day, every night. Um, and it was great. It was really, really great. So I recommend that, you know, to just uh, practice as much as you can performing. And it really helps with singing as well, I find, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, but I don't practice <laughs> singing. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, you know, I just I just sing. That's, that is my practice. I might, I'm like... Before I perform or before I record, I might do some like, you know, when your voice sometimes kind of crackles a bit, especially in the mornings. Um, and sometimes when you're trying to hit a note, it sort of does this weird crackling thing. So I do these sort of like warm up things that I don't know, someone told me it's basically like just going through your whole vocal range. So like going this sort of stuff you know it basically just warms up your your vocal cords and makes sure that that you're not gonna kind of crackle when you sing a note or whatever um but that's about it you know um 
yeah hope that answers that uh what is your warm-up practice for guitar um i had like uh i don't do it as much as i should do because um you know we we tend to get uh do you know, heard of this thing called tendonitis guitarists um and the other day i was feeling a bit of pain in my tendons so um, I should do more warm-ups, but uh, that's that again, and I'm, I'm a bit guilty of. Um, I just do like some scales or something, you know. Something like, I don't know. You know, some scales or something. Um, something just repetitive and just, it's going to warm up all the fingers, you know. You could even just do like uh, first fret, second fret, this sort of thing. I don't know if you've ever seen that. So you go on like this, and then you go up one fret. Like this, and you're just basically doing this. It's not, it's not musical at all. <laughs> it's very boring. Um, but it warms up all your fingers, you know. I guess that's... That's kind of all you need to do is just kind of, and this sort of stuff, you know, to kind of just, just like warming up and stretching. I would really only do it if I was performing or recording um, things like this, you know, um, or yeah, something like that. But, you know, I teach, I teach a lot of, I do a lot of teaching in Berlin, um, in schools and stuff. So I'm pretty much playing all day every day um so it's you know i get just warmed up by doing that but yeah especially if it's cold or anything like that just just make sure you kind of warm up warm up the digits and your tendons as well you know the tendons are the ones that go through here and just make sure that they're nice and loose and something like that just is is a is a good good kind of practice to get into for sure um Hand yoga, exactly. Um, Don, it's very much a thing. Classical guitarists have many videos on it. Uh -huh. uh, did Don say, is that a thing? All oh, the making standards sound like dad gad. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of amazing classical guitarists that's, that use a lot of the barring, don't they? Um, yeah, absolutely. It is definitely easier barring on a classical guitar than a nylon, I find, than a, sorry, a nylon string than a steel string. Um, all right, I'm going to play another song now, but keep the questions and the, the comments coming. They're all good. Um, I'm going to do another example of playing, um, you know, in an open tuning, in an alternate tuning. Um, and, you know, let us know what, if you use any alternate tunings, what tunings you use. Um, but in this stream, we, we're talking mainly about, basically, I called it a beginner's guide to alternate guitar tunings. I don't know how much of a beginner's guide it is, you know, but I'm hoping this could help some people out there. Um, and I know it can be very overwhelming, when you're just starting to, to, to try out alternate tunings or exploring alternate tunings. Um, so this is some of the, the options that you can do and the things you can do. Uh, the first thing I said was work out where the notes are. Whatever, and don't worry about playing in a key uh, or don't worry about not knowing the notes or playing in a scale or anything like that just use your ears whatever sounds good to your ears is right you know um, and come up try and come up with a very simple melody using these these fretted notes and then the open strings as well and then if you can add some bass notes to that melody
Um, and then from there, you can use things like some more exploring is to use capos with it. Um, that can kind of give you some other sounds. Um, and also using different keys as well. Um, and I'm going to do something, do a song in a different key here. It's a capoed up quite high. I can't even remember where I get have this capo. Where is it now? I think I have it here. On a sixth fret. It's quite high. But it gives, definitely gives, I quite like using a capo. Kind of gives a different sound. And then using different keys as well. So this, I'm playing in actually a G. Or my mind is telling me it's in G because the capo is on the 6th fret, but if the capo was off, it would be in G, G minor. But I'm, I'm, the, the trick is that I do is I pick keys where, that also have a lot of the open strings in as well, you know. So the G minor has a lot of Gs and Ds, which Dadgad has as well, and it has an A as well. Um, you know, so it still works really well with that guy. Just going to add a little bit of a wee bit of reverb on this. Here we go. She's a drunk, middle-aged mom She had children when she was too young Now it's something you might be surprised Three different kids from three different guys She spends her time drinking away Drinking special brew every day How did she end up this way? People would say Down by the river You may find nothing but tits and tat Here at the river We all are just a bunch of He's a loner, he's a no man, a young voter that didn't have plans. Now all he has is a very long beard. 
keeping him awake all oh, these tears. He has one friend in all the world, his old dog with a long grey coat. He never sees the light of day, just waiting for time to pass He's a dad, he's a nice guy, young father that doesn't know why. Can't see his poor little son, cause all these things this kid's mother has done. He has no money, no job, he'd do anything to earn a few more. You look at him and you might judge that all he feels for his son. was The River and uh, by my an original piece. Yeah. Um, so if you just joined us, uh, we're talking about alternate tunings and uh, the many different ways that you can use them. Uh, but basically this is the sort of designed for um, people that are just starting out with, with alternate tunings. But like any of my live streams, you know, you can feel free to ask questions about really anything, you know. Um, doesn't have to be about the topic that we're talking about. So with that, um, <laughs> that song, actually, um, I was talking about using melodies and then bass lines. Um, so that particularly mainly focusing on fingerstyle guitar. Um, but that song there, I actually wasn't using. I was mainly, I've uh, got the capo off now, but... Um, you know, I wasn't really singing, playing the, the melody line, um, which... Uh, 
doesn't help when I was trying to <laughs> I was trying to think of an example uh, of playing a melody and a bass line. Um, But like the song that I did first on this live stream, nobody's fault but mine, you know, I'm singing or playing really. So I'm playing the the, the singing melody line and and the bass notes as well. Um and this is basically, this is a lot of what I'm doing. Um, aside from, from when, it's, when it's kind of, when it's more of a rhythmical song, like the river. You know, I will kind of want it a bit more rhythm based. Uh, I might not put the melody, the singing melody as well. Um, but a lot of the time I'm playing the melody and singing it at the same time. And that's kind of something that I got from, um, from a lot of blues players um, and uh, and folk players as well, you know, uh, a lot of folk songs they do that. Um, but mainly a lot of a lot of blues guys actually. Um, but yeah, so this is this is uh, a, a way where you can explore a uh, alternate tuning. coming up with a very simple melody and then trying to put some kind of bass line over the over the, the bottom of it you know very simple bass line very simple and using the fact that you have a lot of these uh, open strings available to you you know use that to your advantage because a lot of open strings can be melody notes you know and that's kind of what I'm doing I'm using mixing the open strings with the with the fretted notes um, you know so it's a lot easier to come up with these melodies because you just if you can't think of something to play, then you just <laughs> play one of the open strings, and you know, and it, it, it's always going to work because you're in that key, you know. Um, and that's one of the beautiful things about playing in open tunings um, is that it's whatever you play on the open strings, it's, it's going to work, it's going to fit, you know. Um, Whereas if you're using some other keys, it's not necessarily going to fit, you know, especially if I'm playing in like C major. That, that, the, the D fits there. Um, like I'm still mixing the the open strings with fretted notes but I'm being uh, being kind of more a bit more careful about it you know I'm doing a lot more kind of chords you know um, a lot more fretted notes there um, I hope that makes sense uh, anyway <laughs> kind of going on a tangent there uh, let's have a look at the at the comments um, Many Vibes, how's it going? There's, um, says, this song reminds me, uh, have you ever considered becoming part of the Fingerstyle Candy Rat Records? I believe it's called something like that. Yeah, the, <laughs> uh, Candy Rat Records is, uh, it's huge. There's loads of Fingerstyle, amazing Fingerstyle um, players on there, isn't there? Um, yeah, I mean, in general, record labels, I'm not really that interested in um, in record labels. Um, apart from 
uh, for me, the they 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 have two things: is they have uh, they might have money to invest, um, and they have they have contacts. You know, um, two really big things when when you're a musician and you're trying to get yourself out there. Um, but apart from that, you know, um, it's uh, I wouldn't really I wouldn't really want to sign another deal uh anytime soon you know i've done i've done that in the past uh which has has been great but um i'm quite happy being able to just kind of do whatever i want to do you know um to some extent uh, even if it's independent label they always have some control over over everything you do in a little in a in a very small way but you know I want to be able to just, um, if I want to release a free jazz album, you know, just I want to be able to do that. You know, I'm not saying I will do that, <laughs> but I want to be able to do that, you know, um, without without any any constraints or anything like that, you know. Um, but yeah, to Candy Rat Records, there's a, there's a lot of amazing guitarists in there, isn't there? Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't turn it down, <laughs> you know, it's, but it's, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm quite doing what I'm doing right now on YouTube. I mean, I'll, I'll be talking about this uh, a lot in future videos as well. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely sort of heading down the, a different kind of, a different way, a different path. Um, in terms of my 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 music and what I'm putting out there, and how I'm going about it, um, and it's uh, you know it's 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 very freeing. I I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, um, and I really like the different uh, the different medium of, of videos and and music and and everything in between. You know. Um, and I, I'm just loving being able to do what I want to do creatively at the moment, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, there is some, there is pressure when you sign a record deal that, uh, you know, you do have to come up with songs and you do have to, uh, there is a time limit, you know. Um, and you do have to kind of, uh, you know, uh, come up with it and uh, um, and and release albums and and tour and everything like this and that's great. I mean that's what I want to be doing, um, but on my own terms, you know. So it's uh, I mean it's a whole it's a whole nother topic <laughs> to talk about uh, when it comes to like record labels and how how people are doing things. But you know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of musicians that are doing kind of going on the YouTube route um at the moment um just someone comes to mind mary spender if anybody's uh looks at mary's videos she's i mean she's been on youtube way longer than me um and she has you know she has a really massive dedicated following um but i really enjoy her videos and uh the path you know she's she's taken because she's just released her first album um and uh completely independently no record label uh, don't think she even has a manager or anything like this you know um so it's really interesting seeing how how she how she re uh, releases music and how she navigates the her um her her kind of musical career um you know on youtube and online and everything like that so um it's uh you know it's it's definitely interesting for me the way things are going and um it's uh seeing other people do it as well kind of gives me inspiration <laughs> to just kind of keep doing what i'm doing um so yeah so that's that's kind of that but i don't want to go you know we i could dive really deep into this topic but um i've definitely be doing kind of more more videos on this, you know, kind of talking a bit about my my past and my history of being signed to an indie label, 
and uh, you know and touring and doing all the folk festivals and stuff in the UK actually living in Berlin right now um, and have been uh, for, for quite a few years now um, and so yeah that's uh, that's a whole nother kind of topic on that one but yeah hope that kind of <laughs> answers your question <laughs> any vibes uh, in a roundabout way um, ah thanks Don cheers appreciate that uh, oh hail Elizabeth Cotton oh yeah she's great <laughs> The godmother of the blues bass thumb. Absolutely. Uh, do you use DistroKid for indie approach? You know what? I'm actually looking at that. I I use s some obscure um, company here in Germany called uh, Fire. I think F-E-F-I-E-Y-R, -E I think they're called. Um I don't know why I chose them. I just, uh, they kind of, they were in Germany. I just felt like, oh, if it's a German company, then they would know all the tax tax stuff. I don't know. Um, so I'm with them, but I think I, I'm I'm really, I will be moving to DistroKid, I'm pretty sure. Um, because kind of paying, I want to be releasing more. A lot of, um, I think very few offer um just just i think just a kid they like you pay 20 20 dollars or 20 euros or whatever um a per month no per year sorry per year um and uh to release as many songs as um as you like you know and i want to be releasing a lot more this is something because you know every every video every youtube video um, you know, I'm kind of creating my own version of a song, um, my own song, you know, um, sometimes I just write completely original music for my YouTube videos. And I like to kind of release that sometimes, you know. So that's something I would really like to do, release more. And, you know, DistroKid kind of makes sense when it comes to that. Um, I think with other ones, you know, you're paying per release which makes sense if you're only releasing every two years or something, but um, I, I want to be releasing more, absolutely. That's one of my, that's one of my goals of 2024. <laughs> so I need to get on it um, because we're, we're in March already. That's wild. Um, yeah, uh, but, um, so that's, yeah, DistroKid I will be using in the future, absolutely. Uh, yes, Mary Spender is great. Can we see a collab in the future? Oh, that would be, that would be amazing. Uh, I don't think she would even uh, reply to my emails, to be honest. But uh, I would be honoured if she would. <laughs> um, who knows? Who knows? Um, I definitely enjoy her videos um, and her music as well. Um, she's a great guitarist and amazing singer as well. She's like classically trained and everything. And she's, yeah, she's she's really good. She's really good. Um, but, but many vibes. Tash Sultana seems to have tried all avenues from busking to indie to signing up with full on sponsors and labels. Uh, who would you like to collab with if you could collab? Um, yeah, who would I like? Uh, I um, that's such a hard question to be honest. Um, I I have uh, I have a lot of people. Um, do they have to be alive? Because I have a lot of people that are not living that I would love to collab with. <laughs> um, my one of my all-time idols a guy called kelly joe phelps um sadly passed away not long ago as well i never managed to see him play live i i always wanted to um but 
I would I would love to do a collaboration with him. He would be my probably my number one. Sadly, he's he's passed, but um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of like blue skies from like the 1920s and 30s. I would love to collab with as well. Um, but um, you know, uh, I collaborations are, are funny. It's like um. I'm not too great at collaborating to, to, to be perfectly honest. Um I like to I like to have full control when it comes to the creative process, you know. Um and uh but but uh I'm I'm kind of getting better at it, you know. Um I haven't really done, done too many collabs. I did a collab with uh a violinist called Henry Webster and we did a we did an album together it's actually on my YouTube channel um completely instrumental album um and uh that was really fun you know that was really fun um I think like uh I'd like to do more collaborations I think I need to get used to it more you know and it has to kind of be someone that I really trust and someone that is uh, that is a, a friend, maybe you know, or someone I know. Um, I think I would find it hard to collaborate with someone, a complete stranger. But having said that, you know, um, <laughs> I can improvise with people really easily. You know, um, I think it's because it's so quick. It's like you're not thinking about it. You know, and imp improvisation is basically composing really fast. Um, so, you know, I think there's too much. It's like it's already in the past. By the time you've played it, it's already gone, you know. Um, so maybe when you're composing something that is you're, you're taking your time with and you're is slowly cooking a song, um, you know, when one person wants to go this way, I feel like, ah, I kind of want to go this way with the song, you know. Um, but yeah, I'd like to I'd like to do more collaborations for sure um need to get better at it yeah that's why i always <laughs> I like playing alone um ah you go and see her in september nice to perform is she performing is she doing gigs at the moment um that's really cool it's uh yeah uh, Don says, in a hundred years, when I will be good with my strumming, you, Fabian, and many vibes can collaborate with me. <laughs> Sounds great, Don. Sounds good. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> many vibes. I would love a live stream on the topic of slides and using them one day. Yeah, that's true. I haven't done too much slide stuff. Um I tend to play a lot of lap slide and not too much kind of, you know, uh, bottleneck slide. Um, but yeah, I would, I would, uh, let's do one. I'll do one one day. Absolutely. Um, slide guitar is great. Um, there's some amazing slide players out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I haven't, uh, I don't play slide as much as I should do, um, but it's an amazing tool and it's it's something that uh, I should I should talk about more. Absolutely. Um, if anybody's part of the community, my on my website, then there's actually there's something in there in the community on my website where you can this little button. Um, where you can kind of suggest future live streams. Um, so that's something to, I know you're not, not part of the community, many vibes, but uh, for anybody else that, um, that wants to suggest any future live stream topics or any subjects that you would like me to cover, then you can just kind of submit them there. Um, you know, so, and you can do it, uh, you can do it anonymously, 
or you can put your name down with it. It's up to you. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just there for for me to kind of look at from time to time, and uh, you know, and look at the subjects that you all want to would like me to talk about. Um, yeah, so I think that's uh, that's kind of it, guys. Um, again, a little tired now. It's uh, it's getting a little late. <laughs> um, I hope everyone enjoyed the live stream. Um, and uh, yeah, as I say, we're doing this every every Saturday, um, or as many Saturdays as I can. Uh, Ronald says, uh, Kelly Joe Phelps, superb singer songwriter, love his version of Dylan's Moonshiner. Yeah, he's just an amazing, amazing musician, um, guitarist, and singer. He's just, uh, he was absolutely phenomenal. Um, released some really amazing albums, uh, absolutely. Um, but if you're anyone is not signed to the community, then uh, I invite you to sign up. It's in the link in the description down below. And I I send out kind of emails and uh, and vlogs and little lessons and little little things uh, videos uh, exclusively to the to the community that we're building here. Um, and it's it's kind of related to the live streams as well so you kind of know what's what's coming up you know um so thanks everyone you know i really enjoy these live streams um i really look forward to them every saturday um even though i'm completely exhausted and sometimes i'm a little late um i always really thoroughly enjoy it um so thank you everyone again and uh yeah check back soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see you again very soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.